Hi, welcome to Unit 2.23. This is um, part two of three parts. You have a supplemental video um, or two supplemental videos that you'll be watching in this part. Okay, so we're now going to start talking about conjugate acids and bases, which is probably something you've not heard before, but maybe you heard of the word conjugate. Um, so why don't we pause for a moment and think about what that word means. So as an adjective, conjugate means, because um, first of all, there are many definitions for the word conjugate, but we're going to use it as an adjective because we're describing um, something, acids and bases. It means uh, coupled, connected, or related in particular. So um, essentially what we're talking about are acids and bases that are connected or related in some way. Um, here's an example of conjugate acids and bases. You're looking at this and you may be like, I guess I can see it. So what, there are two videos that you're going to watch. You're going to watch both of them. Um, and they're pretty short. And you're going to define a conjugate acid and conjugate base. Also summarize how you recognize the conjugate acid and base from a chemical reaction. And be sure in your explanation that you're including like what happens to the H+. All right, so you're going to pause the video now and you're going to watch both videos. There is um, space for you to take notes. And then when you come back together, we'll wrap this up. Okay, so welcome back. Um, so I just want to sort of recap and summarize some of the things that you learned. Um, conjugate acid is the acid that uh, the acid that forms when a base accepts a proton, and conjugate base is the base that forms when the acid donates a proton. Um, and here's an example of that. So um, here we have the base magnesium hydroxide, and HCl is its acid, and H2O is the conjugate acid of uh, the magnesium hydroxide base and magnesium chloride is the conjugate base of the acid. Now a quick way to sort of recognize it is if you're looking at the acid for example you're trying to figure out what is related to what part of the products or which one of the products is related to the acid um, and that you can clearly see. So this one has a CL and this one has a CL okay so that must mean they link up. Um, Whereas for OH, you're thinking, okay, well, what's the one that's closest to it? H2O, because that has an O, and that has an O, okay. So that'll be like a quick way of doing it, but really what you're doing is you're removing protons and adding protons to find the conjugate acid and bases. So let's look at some examples. Um, if you have NH2CH3, this is an amine, um, and you're asked to write the conjugate acid. So amines are bases, and we wanna know it's related acid. Or conjugate acid. So for that, we're going to add H pluses. So you added H plus to this chemical formula. And by adding a hydrogen, the number of hydrogens are going to go up. Just so you know, we increase the number of hydrogens that are directly next to the nitrogen, not the one on the CH3 group, because this is its own separate group. This could be anything. It could be another hydrogen. It could be C2H5. So we don't touch this, but the hydrogen next to the nitrogen is where we increase it. So notice we went from NH2 to NH3, okay, so it went up, and then also the charges would also go up because we're adding a positive charge. So that's the conjugate acid, that's how we would do it. For a base, we would uh, remove H+. So the conjugate base of H2O, you have H2O, you want to remove H+, that means the number of hydrogens are going to go down. So we went from two hydrogens to one, and then the charge, since we're subtracting a positive one charge, we're gaining a negative one charge. So that charge is gonna be minus one. Also, if we were asked to write the conjugate base of HS, it's gonna be the same thing. We're gonna remove H plus. And so we have HF, which is an acid. We subtract H plus, we get rid of the hydrogen. There was only one there, so we get rid of that. And then again, we're subtracting a positive charge, so that gives us a negative charge. Finally, write the conjugate acid of NaOH. Um, so for that, we're adding on a hydrogen um, and a positive charge, which is overall a proton there. And so that's gonna give us HOH. Um, and you may be thinking, well, what happened to the positive charge? Remember, OH is uh, OH minus. And so um, this hydroxide is a polyatomic ion. And that's the part that accepts the proton, not the sodium. The sodium is just a spectator iron. It's just floating around in the water. Um, so the H plus links up with the OH minus, not the sodium. And so OH minus and H plus, the two charges will cancel out, giving you a neutral charge. Um, and the 
conjugate acid of any hydroxide is water. Okay, so now it's time for you to do some CFUs. For this CFU, you're gonna write the conjugate acid and bases of the species that are shown. And when you come back together, the um, after you try this out, when you press play again, the answer will be revealed. Okay, so here are your answers. Um, couple things I wanna point out. The conjugate acid of H2O, this is H3O plus hydronium. This is super important to know. Um, this essentially is the acid in solution. So it's very big deal actually hydronium. Um, we oftentimes simplify hydroniums as H pluses, but um, it's, it's um, something that you're gonna see a lot. Okay, so um, if anything you have, a, if you have a question or anything, please be sure to circle that and um, bring that question to class or office hours. Okay, um, now we're going to look at doing examples where it's not just, we're not just looking at a single species, but figuring it out from a, a chemical reaction. And here we have an acid base, so the acetate um, or acetic acid and sodium hydroxide. They're acid and bases, they form a salt and a water. Um, so let's see how we would figure out from this what, what's what. So CH3COOH, we know that's an acid because it has that Ku group, so that's the acid. And the base is a metal hydroxide, so we know that NaOH is a base. Okay, so what is its conjugate? You're looking for the thing that's related to it. That's the easiest way of doing it. And I usually like to start with the acid because that's usually the easier one to find. So CH3COO, I'm looking for anything with alpha CH3COO. Oh, here it goes. Now you may be thinking, well, where did the sodium come from? Um, since this is a double exchange reaction, the anion of the acid, which is the acetate, CH3COO minus, is going to link up with the cation of the base, the sodium plus. And so it does form the salt. But remember, sodium is a spectator ion, and this is where um, sometimes it's helpful to write things out as ions, so you can sort of see that. The sodium is just floating around in, in the solution. So even though this is the product, and this would, you could isolate this if you evaporated all the water, at following the reaction um, in terms of being a conjugate acid conjugate base this is the part that matters okay so this is the conjugate base of the acid and you can see they look pretty much the same except for you just uh, remove that H plus there and replace it with sodium the base if you have a hydroxide base the conjugate acid of it is always going to be water and so that's that what about for something like this? This is the auto ionization of water. So two water molecules, they can um, sort of rip, like one model, water molecule can rip a proton off of another water molecule forming hydronium and the hydroxide. So the conjugate acid of water is H3O plus and the conjugate base is OH minus. So when we, so actually the, the thing, the reason why this is important is because in an, in a aqueous solution, the acid that's really there is actually this H3O plus, and then the base that's really there is this OH minus. It's just a little tidbit of information you don't really need to know, but that does show you that these um, species are important. So hydronium and hydroxide. All right, you're gonna try to identify the acid and base pairs for these, uh, for this next CFU in this chemical reaction. So the easiest way of doing it, look at things that are related. You could technically stop and figure it out the way that you would normally do, um, but it's just easier to figure, look for things that look alike and are related. All right, so pause the video now. When you press play again, the answer will be revealed. Okay, so here are your answers. For the first one, NH3, you know that that's a base. So you know what we'll be looking for is this conjugate acid. And the quickest way to do it, just look at the one that looks most similar to it, and that's the conjugate acid. Okay, great. Um, or what you could do is you, for, to form the conjugate acid, you would add an H plus to this. So NH3 goes to NH4 plus. For the water, which acts as an acid in this case, um, you know that its conjugate base will result from when you when you lose a proton. So H2O, if it loses a proton, it forms hydroxide. That makes it the conjugate base. Or you could remember that um, the conjugate base of water is OH minus. However you want to do it, um, that would help you to figure out the answer. Here we have a base, uh, CH3CO minus. You may be thinking, oh, I don't, I didn't know that was a base. Um, but this is an acetate ion. 
and it doesn't have any protons. And if you look on the other side, it gained a proton, so this must make it a base. And here, uh, NH3CH3+, notice that this has um, an extra proton on it, and we know it has an extra proton because it has a positive charge, and nitrogen has more than three things attached. It has four things, three hydrogens and one methyl group. So this will be our clue that this is an acid. At any rate, um, the base would for the conjugate base would form when we remove the pro remove the proton. Okay, so in this case, um, an easier way maybe to tackle this problem is if you looked at this side and you saw, oh, I don't know what that is. Look on the product side and see if you can recognize things. And you probably could recognize on the product side that this was an acid. So okay, this is a Ku acid. Or well, what's related to this? So this, since it's the product, it must be my conjugate. That means that the thing that's related to it on the other side would be the base. And the same thing over here, you look at this amine and you say, oh, I know this is a base. Since it's a product on the product side, this is the conjugate. So this is the conjugate base of, of this acid. So this one, you could also work it backwards. All right, so this video is over and we are going to start part three. Um, when you are ready, you can start part three.